Today we're talking about four types of soil, four types of ground that the seed of God's word lands on. And my question to you is, which one are you? Or maybe if you're already a believer, of the rest of God's commandments and his will for your life, how do those either root in and, t- and take, take root and fruit in your life? Or how do they get stolen from you? Let's take a look at it. Hey everybody, welcome to Bible Time. Craig here. So glad that you're with me. It's a good day to spend time in God's Word, and I just want to jump straight in today. We're in Mark chapter 4, so if you have a Bible, go and open up there. If not, you're going to see it. But let's just jump right in and see what see what God wants to speak to us today. It says, again, he, Jesus, began to teach beside the sea, and a very large crowd gathered about him so that he got into the boat and he sat in it on the sea, and the whole crowd was beside the sea on the land. Um, whether this was because they were crowding him too much, he needed to get in the boat, or uh, the way that words kind of bounce and amplify off the water, I think both techniques, uh, both reasons were used by him a couple times. It says, uh, he was teaching them many things in parables and his te- in his teaching he said to them listen behold a sower went out to sow I just want to touch on this word for a second uh, parables real quick before we jump into it um, I- I've mentioned this before but if you're new to these videos I just want you to hear this and because part of the reason for Bible time is to help train people on how to read the Bible and spend time in God's Word and so when you come across parables um, it's kind of interesting and seems contradictory, but Jesus uses parables for two reasons that are quite opposite of each other. On the one hand, sometimes he uses parables to make a concept easier for somebody to understand, like like an analogy, like a story that they relate with. So if he's talking to a farmer, he might tell a story about farming. If he's talking to fishermen, he might talk about fishing. And he'll do this so his te- they can grasp his teaching a little bit easier. On the other hand, it's clear both in the way that Jesus did it and his direct words that oftentimes he uses parables to actually conceal the truth and as an invitation to people to say, if you really care about what I'm saying, you'll, you'll ask questions, you'll dig in, you'll think about it, you'll You'll mull it over. You will you'll search out that treasure until you figure out the truth of what I'm saying, if you really care. And in fact, in one place, Jesus says, uh, he quotes Isaiah and he says, though having ears, they will not hear. And so he started speaking in parables from that t- time forward so that they wouldn't understand. And it's like, man, it's such a unique thought that he's he wants people to understand him so much and yet, for those that don't have a desire to understand him, he's not going to make it easy for them to just hear what he's saying. He's asking us to dig in with faith and desire like like a like a person that's digging for treasure, digging for gold that we're searching, we're willing to do the hard work to to find out of the ground, out of his word, the the treasure that is buried in there. And so I think that's important to understand, especially if you're new to the Bible. Um, In this particular case, it doesn't seem that difficult to understand, but if you notice the first parable, maybe if you're listening to it, you didn't quite get it, but then luckily we have the privilege of hearing the explanation of it that he gives to his disciples. Um, And so let's let's see if, uh, I don't know what he does in Mark, I haven't pre-read this, but let's see if he tells the parable and the explanation. But anyway, he says this, Behold, or listen, behold, a sower went out to sow, so like a farmer. And as he sowed, some seed fell along the path, and the birds came and devoured it. Other seed fell on the rocky ground, where there did not have much soil, and immediately it sprang up, since there was no depth of soil. And when the sun rose, it was scorched, and since it had no root, it withered away. Other seed fell along the thorns, and the thorns grew up and choked it, and it yielded no grain. And other seed fell on the good soil and produced grain, growing up and increasing and yielding thirtyfold or sixtyfold and a hundredfold. And he said, He who has ears to hear, let him hear. So that's exactly what I was talking about. 
He's like, hey, if you really want to hear this, if you if your spiritual ears are open, then you will hear. Okay, let's see if we can divide this up so it's a little clearer. So here's section one. Okay, there's one. Here's two. Here's three. And here's four. Okay, so number one is the path. And the result is birds came to devour. Number two is the rocky ground. And the result is not much soil. And immediately it sprang up, but there's no depth. So the sun rose, it was scorched, had no root, and it withered away. Number three, thorns. And they got choked. And number four, good soil and the result producing grain and increasing and that is at 30, 60 or 100 fold. So not the same rate, not the same exact amount of fruit, but nevertheless producing fruit. So Jesus is telling a story. He says, whoever has ears, let them hear. And four soils, four different outcomes, four different situations and which one are we going to be? So I don't see... Let's see if the explanation is down here. It is not. So just because it's really important for us to... Actually, in this case... For, for you to know what the... What is meant by this. This is exactly what I was talking about, though. There's no further description of this. And so, like, if you read this or you're there hearing this in the time... You might just be like, well, I don't, what are you talking about? Okay, and then you move on. But we see in another gospel that he actually describes what he means by that. And so um, I'm going to find that and I'm going to show that to you because in this particular case, I just think that it's important that, that you actually hear what he, what he means. And so um, give me a second. All right, so here we have the exact same account in the Gospel of Matthew. We have done this before. Um, and notice that the, the progression is similar. There's the parable of the sower, and then there's a section on the purpose of the parables you see here. Uh, and we see this in Mark as well. So the parable of the sower and then the purpose of the parables. And then in, in Matthew, it explains it. So let's just read this real quick. Hear then the parable of the sower. When anyone hears the word of the kingdom is, and does not understand it, the evil one comes and snatches it away. What has been sown in his heart? This is what was sown along the path. As for what was sown on the rocky ground, this is the one who hears the word and immediately receives it with joy, yet he has no root in himself. He endures for a while, but when tribulation or persecution arises on account of the word, immediately he falls away. As for what was sown among the thorns, this is the one who hears the word and the cares of the world and the deceitfulness of riches choke the word and it proves unfruitful. As for what was sown on the good soil, this is the one who hears the word and understands it. He indeed bears fruit and it yields. In one case, a hundredfold, and thus another 60 and another 30. So this is the, the Jesus's explanation of exactly what we read in Mark and exactly what appears right above this in Matthew. And so um, I think that it's, it's really important for us to consider, take inventory of our own life and to ask ourselves, when it comes to God's word, say a commandment that we know that he's given or um, 
something that we know we should be doing or something that we know we shouldn't be doing or any anything like that like generally speaking just think of God's heart and God's will for my life as I understand it when you hear it when you when you understand it that truth that commandment and if you think about your heart and where where that request of his lands whether a thing to do or a thing to not do is it landing on a path where the evil one is snatching it away is it landing on rocky ground and maybe you receive it with joy but there's there's no root in it and and you face tribulation and persecution and so immediately you fall away or that that desire that commandment falls away in you is it landing among the thorns where the deceitfulness of riches and things that you might get they strip away that commandment that God gave you the cares of the world or is it landing on good soil or if you just think about your life in general uh, is your whole life good soil or or is your life more like the path or the rocky ground or uh, the thorns I think that these questions are really important because man, it's so easy for us it's so easy for me even who to just assume well I mean I follow Jesus so I must be the good soil and those that don't believe in Jesus and don't follow Jesus though though those people are one of the other three but it is it possible that it's not like quite that just cut and dry like yeah in the sense of the gospel was preached do you believe the word of God and put your faith in Jesus okay yeah that landed on good soil I'm a believer versus no I I accepted him with joy but then I fell away because of the desires of the world um, but like but okay we're believers we're following Jesus but after that isn't it true that the soil of our heart can in regards to what God wants us to do with the outcome of our salvation isn't it true that sometimes even though we might be saved the soil of our heart is either hard or you know truth is easily plucked from us or the lusts of the world and the cares of the world or the stresses of the world steal God's will you know his desire his word from our hearts and so I think it's important to remember that even if we're saved we should still consider am I good soil am I am I letting God's truth grow up in me and produce fruit I think I'm gonna save yeah verse 10 on and the purpose of the parables uh, for another day because I think that this stuff is important enough to consider to spend a little bit of time considering um, because God wants his word his word is life to us his word is a gift to us his word whether it's a, a commandment or a rebuke or an encouragement or something that hey a blessing or hey I do this I have this for you or, or please don't do that anymore this is not life to you whether it's stop being sexually immoral or start serving your spouse or spend your money this way or don't spend your money this way or treat people with more loving tone in your voice or share the gospel or stop talking about that slanderous stuff or stop being angry or stop gossiping or whatever it's it's positive commandments and and, and don't do commandments and and ways to think and ways to talk and ways to act and all of God's will his word for your life what kind of soil is it falling on it's worth you considering for just a few moments before you start your day today or finish your day today whenever you're joining me with this how are you receiving God's truth think about the last message that you heard preached the last sermon that you heard did you do anything with it did it fall on soil and not sprout into any fruit at all or did you take something from that sermon and put it into practice invite you to consider that and to pray about that and to say Holy Spirit give me one seed today what do you want me to do or stop doing today and then decide in your heart this word is gonna bear fruit you're gonna do it or you're gonna stop doing it or you're gonna respond somehow and I encourage you to do that and to let the Holy Spirit produce fruit in you
Let me pray for you. Lord, I thank you for every person that's joining me. We thank you for this word of the soils. We thank you that we can hear your word and, and even use it to analyze our own heart and the soil of our heart. And we pray. I pray for me and everybody that's listening to this, that you would make our hearts a good soil, that you would empower us through your spirit to respond to your word, that it would bear much fruit. I pray against the evil one, against the cares and the lusts of this world. I pray against anything that's choking out your seed. And I pray that you would make it good soil. You'd water it. You'd, you'd shine your light upon it and you'd help it to grow up and bear fruit. In Jesus' name, amen.